Okay, what we're looking at in this um, little illustration is uh, what does a flow chart look like? And, and why, why do you call it a picture and, and what's it good for? So we're looking at the flow chart example that I gave you. And up at the top, you're going to see a, a symbol that's uh, an oval type symbol. And that's uh, the start part of the flow chart. And then down at the bottom, you're going to see an oval symbol that shows exit, and that's the end of the flowchart. And what our objective is, is to go from the top to the bottom, and that picture should tell you what to do with, uh, with the items that we're looking at. Well, and sometimes that's a little bit difficult to identify. Well, what are we really talking about? So what I thought I would do is I'm going to draw this picture a little bit. Uh, I'm going to broaden it a little bit. But before I do, let me talk about the items that are in here. In the flowchart, you're going to see the oval at the top and the oval at the bottom. And in the middle of the flowchart, you're going to see items like um, a diamond-shaped thing. That's a decision symbol. And you're going to see that from a diamond, um, most of the time you're going to go to the left or to the right. Uh, usually when you go to the right, uh, that would be an indication that you got a true or a yes to your question in the in the diamond, which uh, diamonds are called uh, decisions. So within that decision, you're going to have you're going to ask a question, and that question is going to be a yes/no question. And if it's if the answer is yes, you're going to go to the right, and if the answer is no, you're going to go to the left. Simple as that. It's a it's a diamond shape. The diamond represents a decision. And if you go to the if you get a yes, you go to the right. And if you get no, you get go to the left. Now, if someone always puts their yeses and nos on the on the drawing then you would follow yes whichever direction you I mean you could put the yes on the left and the no on the right but whatever you're going to do you can't have the yes and the no on, on the same side it's got to it's got to make sense this is called logic and it's a part of programming so with that that's the decision and then you're going to see uh, symbols that look like rectangles and those symbols are process symbols usually there's something in there to add or to subtract or multiply or some calculation or something to do those are process symbols, and they're part of doing things. So in our case, we're just going to be adding and subtracting, um, maybe doing some multiplication, something like that. It's nothing heavy. Uh, it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. So that there's really, um, oh, and then the other symbol part of, of this drawing would be the lines. And, and the lines, lines represent the lines represent the directional area of where you're going. So, and usually it on those lines we have uh, a, a, an arrow that says we're going this way. Flowcharts in the pro programming classes that I teach always flow from top down. Uh, you always, ha you, you, you might have a um, kind of a left and a right motion that you got to go through, but you're always basically flowing, flowing from top down. So we've got um, ovals that tell us where to start and end. We've got uh, Diamonds that are decisions that tell us either go to the right or the left. Usually there are only two directions you can go in with a diamond, left or right, after you've come into the diamond flowing in from the top down. And then you've got the process symbols, the rectangles. And that's about it, along with your uh, directional arrows. So that's pretty, uh, pretty easy to follow. The next thing that I wanted to mention is the in, in the diagram that we're looking at, we're looking at uh, letters A, B, C, and X. And those are kind of algebraic type um, letters representing something. And we'll just call those buckets. Uh, we've got a bucket A, and we've got a bucket B, a C, and an X. And the purpose of these buckets will be to collect our oranges. Uh, if you could think we're out on the, um, in an orchard, we're collecting oranges. And what we want to know is that um, through the transactions that are going on, um, i tell you what, I'll take that back. We're not at the orchard. We're at the, um, we're at the store. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have things change our buckets. Now, I'm not going to get real picky about this because I, I just want you to think about oranges here. And uh, that way it would be an easy drawing for me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to say that, um, and I'm going to follow the example in our, in our first list of items. Our example in our starting, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, if we started with 8 and in the A bucket, and 5 in the B bucket, and 3 in the C bu bucket, and X had uh, 0 oranges in it, 
what would we wind up with at the end if we went through this flow chart and went through this little scenario? Okay, so with that, we just talked about the flow chart. We've talked about our items coming in and, and where we're keeping track of those. Now, let me let me back up and talk about the A, B, C, and the X again. Um, those are what we call variables. Those are variables, and those variables change based on what we tell our um, very how we tell it to change and that's based on the flow chart now the the flow chart is our our true guide it's like our map it tells us exactly what to do to these we don't really care why we're at this point because we're this is not really specific like that but we would in a, a more sophisticated program but anyway those this flow chart just tells us what to do and we don't care why we're just going to do it and then we're going to see that our uh, buckets are going to change at the very end okay so we're going to start this out now how would we start it out um, give me just a minute and uh, I'm gonna set this up so listen up 